Today's video concerns an article of history that reaches as far back as 1996. Yes, this video is about cow chop, but by the end of it, I'm hoping to have delivered a clear, concise, and compartmentalized understanding of the context it was couched in. Get it? Couched? The first thing that you'll need to know is that in 1996, there was such a thing as video games. That's right, a game comprised of players, points, objectives, and even storylines could be localized in your video box of choice. These things have been around for a while now, but in 1996, the video game Quake 3 is released. The Quake series is a long-standing hallmark of video game history made by id Software. The first three Quake games are called some of the best in video game history by some nerds that also have these on that list. You know, take that with a grain of salt. So what makes Quake 3 stand out? Well, it was marginally worse than the previous two for the lack of a distinct feature, the movie maker. See, a modern staple in the FPS genre is the instant replay feature, which allows you to re-examine a death on the battlefield for clarity. In the days of Quake 2, this was being used for two reasons. One was cheating, and the other was to examine how to be better at the game. However, by this time, a few creative types had understood that with the right skill and know-how of the game's engine, they would be able to make just about anything they wanted. And so they made a story. They weren't the most compelling films ever made, but this particular movie on screen now was the harbinger for a whole new style of production. And fan works became a burgeoning scene. But then Quake 3 comes out, and it doesn't have this feature, primarily in order to curtail online cheating, but the decision to remove it forced the matter into gamers' hands. And we all know how capable a gamer's hands are. In 2000, a year after Quake 3 comes out, a man by the name of Hugh Hancock starts Machinima.com. The name stuck in this form, and it swelled into the premier internet content network. Machinima Incorporated was a tumultuous venture. It had an infamously messy end, but in its peak of 2013, it was the most viewed channel on YouTube. Not not to mention, a large swath of all of the gaming YouTubers on the platform were under Machinima in some way. So before it collapsed in 2019, Machinima Incorporated would foster dozens of online careers still active to this day. The one we're most interested in for this video's sake is one by the name of the username of the, the guy who made it was Uber Hacks or Nova was his name. Real name, James Richard Wilson Jr. The young Nova would start making videos in April of 2008. Now to be fair, this would have been around the time that James Wilson was about 18, so they're not the most mature things in the world. For example, here's a recreation of the one phone call that woman had after her friend got her face ripped off by her pet chimpanzee. Uh, in Halo, of course. 911, this is your operator speaking. What is your emergency? Hurry! Send the police! Hurry! I mean, help! Calm down, ma'am. Tell me what is happening. <laughs> he, he hit her face! He hit her face! Hurry, bring the cops! Weird and dumb as it is, this is the kind of content that machinimas were all about at the time. All edge and no blood. Take Rooster Teeth for an example. I mean, they started a whole LLC off of drunkenly reviewing video games and then faffing around in Halo. I mean, for God's sake, the name of the company is a euphemism for cockbite. So James starts a successful YouTube channel out of not only machinimas, but gameplay commentary videos and Let's Plays. Mostly Minecraft. I know that because I saw them with my own two eyes. I was there when he had met up with Spoonerism for the first time in Red Dead. No, it wasn't Red Dead. Dead Rising. Dead Rising. It was Dead Rising, too. I was there when James was officially introduced as a member of the Creatures in 2011. The Creatures, as members were called, were all machinimators as well, and had collectivized the same year James had started YouTube, 2008. Spoon had joined in 2008 after a friend of his named Z had invited him into the group, and he invited James. A year later, James would be inducted into the group as an official member of the Creatures. He would quickly become a fan favorite. His crude, offensive style melded very well with this group of major league gamers, and they produced content together, mostly multiplayer let's plays why hello everyone and welcome to 
Da, 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 Treetopia! Yeah. Ow, ow. Yeah. Treetopia? Treetopia. Is that a sequel to the 2001 hit Treehouse Reborn? <laughs> it, 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 it's funny you should ask, uh, Mr. Perry on Nova. It yeah. is. The group also collaborated on Machinimas together, like their Trapville Borderlands Machinima series. Sorry, I, I said it was a series, but there's only, there's only the one episode, uh, and it's episode zero. They never, they never went anywhere with this. They weren't the most prolific machinima makers, but they were probably one of the most successful groups. The creatures had built most of their popularity around content that wasn't their machinimas, and so from 2012 to 2016, they had experienced high enough viewership that they had actually expanded into a business called the Creature Hub. They had an office and a staff and a payroll. And for five years, James would enjoy the successes of this career path and be boosted into the league of names like Tobuscus and PewDiePie. I know uh, those names aren't very impressive now, but you gotta understand that this was a different time. This was this was during the era of like Smosh and I Justine. Do you know who I Justine is? Because she doesn't, she's not around anymore. Is is I Justine still around? I actually don't know. What? Where is I Justine right now? I'm actually, I'm gonna have to find out because I, I didn't do that part of the research. Hold on. God damn, I Justine is almost forty years old. What the hell? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it lo- it looks like it looks like she's still a YouTuber. It looks like she still does stuff. Um, wow, forty. Damn. That's, uh, I just didn't expect that. Good for her. I just didn't I just didn't know. By 2016, the creatures were dominating the gameplay commentary scene thanks to James and 2013 inductee Immortal HD, real name Alexander Vitalovich Chernov Marchant. These two made up a significant portion of what are considered to be the highlight clips of the Creature Hub, and it wasn't long until they were recognized as the standout members of the group. Parasocially, these two were ranking higher than the lead member Kutra, real name Jordan Mathewson. With members like Z Royal Viking and Spoonerism Long departed from the group, James became somewhat of a senior member. This paired with his sizable audience gave James a lot of leeway in business decisions, and this ruffled some feathers behind the scenes. Now any real or imagined drama that occurred behind the scenes is difficult to parse and somewhat insensitive to cover as it's the real life personal drama of real life individuals, but there are points that can be discussed objectively and with proof. On April 4th of 2016, the Creature Hub released a video announcing that they were joining the Rooster Teeth MCN, that is multi-channel network. However, Three days before Creatures announced that they're working with Cockbite, James and Alex release a video on their own channel called Cowchop. Cowchop was a YouTube channel headed by James and Alex, formerly of the Creatures, and new personalities Aaron, Joe, and Trevor. These three had their place at the Creature office before moving with Cowchop, so they had their chance to stay with the Creatures. However, only a year later, the Creature Hub YouTube channel would suffer such a decrease in viewership that they would cease operations entirely. This is Kutra, uh, Jordan, and Dan, Dan's, uh, announcing that they were unfortunately going to have to shut the channel down. This can be blamed on a number of factors. As I said before, there seemed to be some interpersonal drama behind the scenes that Tor was once a friend group apart, but members had been leaving long before James and Alex had decided to. The only difference now is that the viewers had never left with any of the members. This time they did. All at once, the Creature Hub lost its audience and they migrated over on the cow shop. Same time as Machinima was dying, Creature Hub was facing a similar fate. So now you know the context in which Caltrop arose. Um, now I have to tell you about the content. Ugh. The thing that finally kickstarted this video into production, the video that you're watching right now, uh, was a statement released by my personal favorite ex-member of Cowchop, Trevor Schmitty II. Nowadays, he works for OTK Media, but in October of 2022, he released a statement on Twitter talking about how difficult it really was to work with James and Alex. This video was made in light of this announcement and greatly takes into consideration the serious nature of this stuff being discussed, and I hope my coverage of it doesn't stir any drama or offend anybody mentioned. Trevor states in the address that he holds neither hatred nor any grudges towards any members of the crew, and I'd like to carry on that sentiment. With that being said, let me actually explain what I'm talking about. 
So on April 1st of 2016, Cowchop releases their first video, titled First Video. It relied very heavily on a pre-established audience, as every shot and sound design choice recalls highlights of James and Alex's time on the Creature Hub. With an announcement so front-loaded with nostalgia, it comes as a surprise that in the comments of this video, the Cowchop account would anonymously comment, Thank you for supporting the little guy. Why the biggest of the ex-creatures would position themselves as the little guy is unclear. But I would suggest that at this time, James and Alex had felt like they had been pushed out of the Creature Hub uh, due to creative differences between James and Jordan. Trevor would state in a twit longer that after meeting with Jordan from the Creature Hub, uh, he would eventually talk about James and the, the two would relate pretty closely on uh, James's relative combativeness and uh, aggression. But I say that there are creative differences and you wonder what might those be? Um... I would tell you that it probably comes down to how much vulgarity was in the content, which might be a little bit of a strange dynamic to interpret here, but most of what the fans enjoyed about their interactions was that James was foul-mouthed and mean, and, and Jordan was meek and... Well, he's not from the Midwest, but he has a speech pattern that's distinctly absent of any foul language when compared to James. In fact, he prefers terms like darn it, and what the brown for when things are really getting intense. He just doesn't curse. It just stands out a lot. But James is the extreme attitude in the group. He's the big personality, the main mover and shaker of the Cow Chop crew. What he said went, and where he went, Alex, Aaron, Joe, and Trevor followed, because they usually had to film him from at least two different angles in order to capture whatever he did. Alex had his moments, of course, uh, but James was just unbridled chaos, which is really good for when you're a cow-themed prank channel, but not so good when you're trying to run a business. And that's eventually what Cow Chop became, a business just like the Creature Hub. After all these other failed attempts at bringing gamers into business, Cowchop decides to do the exact same thing. They begin operating this business first out of a house in Littleton, Colorado, then out of a barn in God knows where, and then out of a warehouse in LA. Here are some highlights from the time that they spent in the house. Highlight one, James, Alex, Trevor, and a cameraman all sit down in a specifically made office called the Slaughterhouse. At this point, they were filming cow chop videos out of the creature office, and for the special gameplay, they have Trevor react to explicit material in virtual reality. On his 18th birthday, Trevor is very clearly uncomfortable throughout the entire video, but that was kind of the point of the video, so everyone just kind of laughs it off. But the premise is weird. Imagine being sat down by your two bosses, both of them, and they tell you, go and look at this porn and, and we're just going to kind of sit in the room and laugh at it. If I was 17 the day previous to this, I don't know, I would feel icky. I, I would feel gross. I would feel like this was taking advantage of something. Maybe me. But hey, you know, that's that's just what Cowchop was all about back then. And, and Trevor just really needed to lighten up and take a joke, right? That's what the comments were really about back then. They were They were really that content brained. They were really that YouTube brain. Highlight two, James and Alex check out their new base of operations, the Cow Chop House. Editors would work out of the upstairs bedrooms. Content would mostly be filmed in the living room, kitchen, and dining room, and props were stored in the basement. At this point, the positions of the Cow Chop crew are pretty enviable. Who wouldn't want to play games all day, dress up in stupid outfits, and make a mess, and then get paid and revenue for it? Well, the answer to that rhetorical question is the guy who has to clean all of it up. Trevor was the cameraman, the editor, the video scheduler, and the thumbnail guy. And that's pretty much all that goes into a YouTube channel besides being on camera. Except that he was also on camera. James and Alex not only dumped all of the off-camera responsibilities onto an 18-year-old Trevor, but they also brought him into the fold just to see how he would react to things, similar to the VR video we saw before. It wasn't for the sake of a third opinion when they were getting commentary or a look into the behind-the-scenes editing process. It was just so that they could throw things at him, and, and he would scream funny. Highlight number three, James and Alex order way too much food for Trevor and then and shove it in his mouth and throw it at him. Highlight four, Trevor's in the bathroom late one night, 11 p.m., when Alex breaks in. 
The crew then harassed Trevor with a camera in hand. Highlight 5. Alex helms a video and waterboards his friends. Now, if you weren't aware, um, this is extremely irresponsible and dangerous because it not only simulates the very real suffocation that is associated with drowning, but nobody in the video that you're watching now had health insurance when they did this. That's right, nobody in this gig, despite being a part of the Rooster Teeth Let's Play Family MCN, had health care, but were still expected to participate in physically demanding content creation. Highlight 6, Alex buys a military-grade stink bomb and douses Trevor's jacket with the contents, then throws it into the main editing room and holds the door shut. Everyone inside crawls onto the roof in order to escape, but Trevor brings the article with him, to which James makes him throw it off the roof. Trevor says he paid a lot of money for the jacket, but caves to his boss's request. Meanwhile, as is explained on Trevor's twit longer, the crew just wasn't getting paid at this time. Not well, maybe not at all, it's unclear exactly how well they were compensated for this time, but the financial stress is clear on Trevor's demeanor. The crew would eventually get a pay raise after moving to LA, but that was a far future from the moment that Trevor lost his nice jacket, so it's kind of a big whoop. Highlight 7. 55 gallons of sex lube arrive at the cow chop house, and they make use of it. Nothing especially horrible happens in this video, but it's all very homoerotic, and that deserves its own highlight. Highlight number eight. Alex, James, and Brett are in Seattle for a convention, PAX, and from their hotel room, they cook up the worst video on the entire channel, one so unbearably cringy and gross that it not only receives special notice from Trevor's retelling of the events, but it's also been deleted from the channel. The video's title is Trevor's Hot Date, and from that Seattle hotel room, the three concoct a fake dating profile for Trevor as he decided to stay back home. Despite him literally avoiding being on camera so that nobody can make a joke out of him, the three come back to the house, write out Trevor's surprise video on the calendar, and wait for the day to arrive. Now you're wondering, what was the day? Well... It was the day they invited that date to fly out from Seattle and meet Trevor. Trevor had no knowledge of this prior to literally standing in front of the person he was supposed to be dating at this time and had absolutely no idea that this would be a half-naked elderly woman who would then proceed to give him a lap dance. So, you know, classy stuff from the people at Couch Out. Highlight number nine, Trevor has his nose filled with a heated and spice-filled liquid. Highlight number ten, Trevor has his eyes sprayed with a Mace brand pepper gun. He wrote in the twit longer that this was never explained to him that this would happen during the video, and that if it were explained to him, he would not have participated in it. However, Alex decided to withhold this information until the very end, concealing it for the purpose of springing it on his co-worker and friend out of nowhere. Highlight 11, Trevor and James heat up metal objects and stick them into electronics, then strike a lithium battery with a hammer. Whoa, 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 Yo, that is fucked up, dude, that is fucked up, what the fuck? Yo, that's still going! What do we do? Highlight number 12, in a turn of events that should have surprised absolutely nobody, the Caltrop crew receives an eviction notice from their property manager. Considering everything that they got away with on this property, it's really, really surprising that they didn't actually hurt themselves or burn the place down in the process. Uh, all the while, though, James has a massive attitude about getting kicked out. Sorry, uh, about being ratted on. Like he wasn't doing objectively illegal and dangerous things on that property. So they're getting kicked out. But at this point, they already have plans to move to L.A. This just sort of quickened the process for them. But for that short window between the time that they were spending in the house and the time that they would be in Los Angeles in the warehouse, they spent in a barn for livestock. Uh, Trevor highlights a time in this in which James and Alex get into a 40-minute argument while playing Breath of the Wild over whether or not they should play the tutorial, which is 
which is so obnoxious. A 40-minute argument. There's no walls in this barn. You have to understand, there are no walls to hide from. You can't run away from your bosses yelling at each other. For 40 minutes, you have to sit there and listen to them argue over doing the tutorial in a video game. Anyway, they got out of there as soon as possible because who could work in that environment, honestly? And carrying all these good vibes to L.A., they set up in the warehouse and start fulfilling promises that they made through Rooster Teeth's Kickstarter of the event. This includes blonding Trevor and Alex. At this point, a lot of the responsibilities that were stressing Trevor out had been actually relieved from him and given to other hires at the warehouse. This let Trevor slide more into his editing slash performing role on Couch Hop because he was still expected to be in front of the camera. However, at this point, the homemade quality of the videos would disappear, and I think that signaled a shift in the dynamic and the quality going forward. Not only were they now based out of Los Angeles, but they were a business and a company, and so they had to be ad-friendly with a lot of their content which meant that James and Alex's signature style had largely gone out the door. The warehouse days have their own highlights, I won't lie. Um, it's just different. It's, uh, it's another one of the Rooster Teeth MCN groups, and so a lot of it was restricted. They couldn't exactly do what they wanted, and the personalities that we came to love on screen just weren't there as presently. They would have guests more and more often. There was constantly new faces coming in and out. We didn't really know who was a mainstay, who to get invested in. It was a mess. So it was not so much of a surprise when in 2019 the channel has to come to an end. Trevor had left after a brief time that he looks on fondly called, Whoa, that's a Let's Play. It was a brief series that they did in the back of an RV driving to the Grand Canyon while playing Shadow of the Colossus. Um, it was interesting. After the channel would continue to decline in views only three years after James and Alex left the Creature Hub, uh, James would suffer a really bad fall while shooting a live-action skateboarding bit. This fall is referenced as the end point of Couch Hop, as James not only broke his leg, but quit the channel soon after, preferring to rely on his solo Twitch career. He would pick up a presence in an online role-playing server called NoPixel. It hosted a bunch of other Twitch streamers, some as big as XQC. They would all get into GTA 5 and role-play various things. It's it's its own story. Alex and James had parted ways before this, but would occasionally appear on each other's streams while in no pixel, causing the Cow Chop fans to reminisce on times that they could more easily be considered friends. The channel's last upload, uh, posted on December 31st of 2019, is a sentimental look back at where the channel had gone in its three years of life. The video deals in a very dry way with the splitting up of the group and the struggle that they faced in the later years to keep up with YouTube's ever-changing content policy. It's an emotional goodbye aided by very humorous jabs at themselves for not being able to keep up with the changing landscape, and it ends with Alex in the back of a cop car. It really did bring a tear to my eye a little bit, because it's a very, it's a very emotionally resonant way to close out a chapter of your life, because I think that's what this was for everybody. It was very well bookended, and there's a bit more to the story. There's the off-canny group that uh, was an offshoot of this channel because the story is just offshoots of offshoots of offshoots. Um, and they have their own thing going on, and I could cover that at some point, but that's its own video. For now, I'm content just covering what had happened with Cow Chop since they were such a big part of my growing up. And yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. I'd like to give a special thank you in making this video to Anthony's Archive, previously known as AFK Anthony. I, uh, first of all, I remember you. <laughs> I remember you from back in the day. Uh, you made some pretty funny videos, pretty funny edits, and, um, yeah, thank you for keeping a bunch of the videos, uh, uploaded to YouTube. It was a, a good resource for this video. I'd also like to thank Trevor Schmitty II, obviously. Um, his time spent at Cow Chop did not go to waste. It was something a lot of people uh, enjoyed, and I don't know, I could always tell, I could always tell that something was really off with the way that they treated Trevor. Um, I kind of wanted to write it off personally as being like, oh, they they probably figured something out behind the scenes. Um, but I made this video because it was kind of a realization that like, oh, wow, all of this 
history that I knew um, wasn't the way that I thought it was. And so I made this video in, in reflection of that. So, you know, I wanted to say that uh, I'm sorry that all this stuff happened to you, uh, Trevor, but the stuff that you've done has inspired me to do what I do now. And so for that, you know, thank you. I want to also give a special thou, uh, thout out to uh, my Discord server. I don't know why. I, you guys don't deserve a shout out. You, you only get the thout out. Um, so there you go. Join the server chaff if you want to be thouted. Um, and then a special thanks to, to my parents and my brothers. Uh, I love you guys. And that's it.